Jacob Burton here from StellaCulinary.com. I'm going to start a new series. We're going to do a very simple Q&A uh, done in my office here. So if you have any sort of questions or comments, go ahead and shoot them my way via email, and I'd be happy to answer them. Now, our first question comes from Alan, and Alan wants to know what the difference is between all the forms of curing salts that you see out there, whether it be pink curing salt, uh, sodium nitrite, sodium nitrate. Uh, so... Basically, we apply curing salts to meat uh, to make them safe to consume after an aging process that develops flavor. Uh, so curing was uh, initially a preservation technique when refrigeration wasn't around, uh, but it just tastes delicious. I mean, things that are, are cured are bacon, duck confit, uh, prosciutto, your holiday hams, all of those are uh, curing applications. So we kept around the curing techniques because they're just delicious, even though we have modern refrigeration and they're no longer uh, really needed. Now, starting around the Middle Ages, uh, the people found uh, different impurities in whether it be uh, sea salt, some vegetable salts, uh, celery contains uh, nitrates, and also uh, just some uh, random rock salts. And uh, one of them was saltpeter, and saltpeter is found in uh, just rock outgrowths, and saltpeter contains sodium nitrate. So when they, well, what they found is when they applied sodium nitrate uh, in a mixture with regular salt to meat, uh, it would improve its color, it would make the meat uh, pink, that nice rosy red that you associate with ham and bacon uh, and any sort of other cured meats. And also give it a flavor, but most importantly, it would keep it from spoiling. Uh, it, it, it would keep it a, a botulism uh, mainly from forming, which was really good. So they can kill or slaughter a large animal, and they could cure a large portion of it for the leaner months. Now, in the early 1900s, a German scientist uh, discovered that what was really going on when you apply these nitrates uh, to meat, you actually had a salt-resistant bacteria that would transform the sodium nitrate into sodium nitrite. And it's actually this nitrite that does the heavy lifting of curing. So what they did is they isolated uh, the sodium nitrite and in most curing salts and most curing applications, sodium nitrite is used almost exclusively. And so what you find is you find uh, some name brands of this salt curing mix of, of, of a sodium nitrite uh, mixed with uh, table salt, sodium chloride, and these are TCM, uh, DQ curing salt, and Instacure number one. And even though they're made by different companies, they all basically contain the exact same thing, which is 93.75% uh, so sodium chloride, which is your common table salt, and 6.25% sodium nitrite. Now, there is... Uh, a, a pink additive added to this, and that's why you get the name pink curing salt or pink salt, right? So when you hear people, especially in professional kitchens, reference pink salt, they're talking about curing salt. And the reason why it's pink is because by itself, naturally, sodium nitrite, nitrate, and uh, sodium chloride in its purest form are just white salts. And a lethal dose of sodium nitrite uh, is only four grams, which is way more than you'd ever use in, a, in any sort of curing application. But you could easily use four grams, especially a pure sodium nitrite, uh, when seasoning a dish, right? So they dye it pink to make sure that you don't uh, accidentally use a sodium nitrite to season your soup or your steak uh, instead of just regular sodium chloride. Now, you'll see in a lot of my charcuterie videos, I actually use pure sodium nitrite, uh, which is white, and I make my own mixes using uh, kosher salt, uh, which is sodium chloride, and it just has the kosher salt basically means that it's milled or it's uh, mined for uh, that jagged texture to be used during the koshering process, right? So it sticks to meat easily. So I prefer kosher salt, uh, especially when making my curing mixtures. And the reason why I make my own mixtures is because I just find that I have more control over it personally, and I like it. So to put this into perspective, though, you use such a small amount of, uh, of curing salt because when I use, when I make my all-purpose curing salt uh, that, I'll, that I apply to my, uh, my duck confit, my pancetta, uh, any sort of curing application, I'm actually taking 1,000 grams of kosher salt, and I'm multiplying that by 0.002%, which gives me 2 grams of sodium nitrite. 
and I'll mix that together and I make sure to label it because that's why I don't have any pink additive in there. Uh, but so what happens is these retail products, your Instacure number one, your TCM, your DQ curing salt, they're basically doing the cutting for you. And then that is further diluted down uh, in charcuterie recipes that call for uh, pink curing salt. They'll normally dilute that down with even more uh, sodium chloride in the recipe so you normally see them call for both table salt and your pink curing salt and they'll use that as an application now the whatever you choose is completely fine just choose what you're comfortable with if you're new to charcuterie uh, you're probably going to want to just follow the recipes in whatever book you're working out of and uh, just you know, use whatever salt that they call call for to make sure you're applying the appropriate amount. If you're a professional chef, uh, you might want to actually get into using your own uh, sodium nitrite in a pure form and making your own mixes because it's going to uh, give you more versatility over the long run. Now there is also DQ curing salt number two and DQ cure, or, it, or uh, Insta cure curing salt number two as well. And what that means is that it's still a predominant mixture of mainly sodium chloride uh, with sodium nitrite uh, sodium nitrite added but it also has a small amount of sodium nitrate uh, and this is your uh, used for long cured meats uh, like fermented sausages hams prosciuttos anything that's going to hang uh, and dry for six months to over a year and some uh, forms of of prosciuttos and hams are cured longer than two years. Uh, so what happens is you have the sodium nitrite in the mixture, in the curing salt mixture, that does a lot of the heavy lifting for the curing process up front. And then as that uh, meat starts to ripen and age, and as you cure it for a longer period of time, uh, the sodium nitrate contained within that mix uh, starts to be metabolized by uh, the, uh, the, the salt resistant bacteria into sodium nitrite, uh, releasing more nitrite slowly over time, allowing you to get a longer cure on your charcuterie products. I'll put some links in the show notes uh, to some of these different salts that I mentioned. And if you have a question of your own that you would like answered, go ahead and send it to me, jacob at stellaculinary.com, and I would be happy to answer it for you.